CRISPR-Cas9, also known as the biological scissors in genetics, is a biological technology which was originally adapted from a naturally occurring genome editing system in bacteria. This system protects them from viral infection by splicing the viral DNA and disabling it before it's able to do any damage. However, this system can be used outside of the bacterial cells and inside of other organisms to add, alter, or remove very specific genes. A common theme for many of these technologies is that they are discovered long before anyone realizes how useful they really are. This was the case with CRISPR-Cas9, which was discovered in 1987, but was not deemed useful until 2012 by the French professor Emmanuel Charpentier. The results published by Emmanuel Charpentier not only won her the Nobel Prize in 2020, but also opened a field of very intense investigation and technological development, making genome editing very efficient in a number of animal species. So what does CRISPR actually stand for? CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. And in order to understand how the process works, you need to understand the individual components of a CRISPR-Cas9 complex. The CRISPR-Cas9 complex has two components. The first is an investigator-designed single-stranded RNA called sgRNA, which means single guided RNA strand. It looks like this. The investigators will design the 20 base pair long sequence of sgRNA so that it is complementary to the target gene sequence of their choosing. In the case of a gene knockout, there will be two sgRNAs designed so that there are two areas recognized and excised by the Cas9 so that the gene of interest is removed. The second component is the Cas9 polypeptide, which has been altered to contain a unique nuclear localization signal, which allows it to enter the nucleus of the cell. The function of this multi-domain protein is to cleave the areas flanking the target gene. This protein is guided to these locations by the gRNA. Let's check out a real world example to see how scientists obtain F1 CRISPR knockout mice. So first, let's say we have a professor who hopes to study autism spectrum disorder. He decides that he will knock out the SHANK3 gene found in mouse chromosome number 15. The absence of this gene is linked to autistic behavior in mice. So in order to obtain the knockout, scientists must select two unique target sites which flank the critical exon of the gene closely. Knocking this region out will render the rest of the gene useless. Scientists design an sgRNA which will complement each of the target sequences while also minimizing off-target effects. To keep it brief, the off-target effect happens when the sgRNA recognizes the same sequence somewhere else in the genome and makes the cuts in those places as well as by the target gene. The mutation caused by this effect can compromise the results of an experiment by adding additional variables, and because of this, it is desirable to minimize it. We'll talk more about the off-target effect in another video, but all you need to know for now is that the off-target effect is bad, and special algorithms can be used in combination with the fully sequenced genome in order to minimize it. The Shank3 knockout strategy, which Cygen generated specifically for this video, begins with the start codon ATG and then contains 22 exons known as coding regions. The stop codon TGA marks the end of the gene. Our scientists determined that knocking out the critical exons 11 through 17 will render the gene useless as the non-homologous end joining will create manipulations to the gene that will disable its function altogether. Now that the target sites have been identified, the researchers must synthesize the sgRNA and the Cas9 mRNA. These segments can be created in the lab, but are more often than not purchased from companies that specialize in making them, such as Sigma Aldrich or Thermo Fisher Scientific. In step 3, a microinjection of the sgRNA and the Cas9 mRNA is performed into the fertilized mouse zygotes on a petri dish. Zygotes are essentially eggs from the mother, which were fertilized by sperm 24 hours earlier. Once this microinjection is performed, each CRISPR-Cas9 complex will perform cuts in the sequence that the gRNA guides them to. After cutting, 
The affected cells use the process of non-homologous end joining to glue the gap in the genome back together. Since there are multiple cells in the zygote, only some of the cells will have their genome cut via CRISPR-Cas9. Next, fertilized eggs are transplanted into the oviducts of pseudopregnant female mice. Pseudopregnancy is induced in female mice using progesterone therapy. In a few weeks time, the pregnant mice will give birth to mosaic mice which contains cells with both the genetic mutation and some without. The mice not affected at all are referred to as wild-type mice. To determine which are wild-type and which are affected, the litter of mice will be screened by PCR. Specifically, the site targeted by the Cas9 nucleases will be PCR amplified, followed by sequencing of the PCR product to reveal any mutations that might have occurred. Mice mutation or deletion on at least one allele are considered knockout founders. Last but not least, the next generation F1 heterozygous mice will be obtained by mating positive founder mice or the F0s with wild type mice. This is optional, but breeding to positive F1 heterozygous animals means that the mutation is confirmed to be transmitted in the germline at this point. That's how you make a knockout mouse using CRISPR. We do that on a daily basis here at Cyogen. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you want to learn more, hit that subscribe button right down below you, big red button, and also be sure to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the video. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good day.